For some reason, these people thought that that was a reason to continue to tour this house. I need them to be super califragilistic expialidociously for real right now. Hey y'all, it's Nate. Welcome back to my little corner of YouTube. Today we are talking about Vivarium, a psychological thriller that was just added to Netflix. If you haven't seen it and you just want a synopsis, that's going to be this first part. Everything else after that will contain spoilers. In this film, we follow a young couple who is house hunting. One day they decide to tour this house in a neighborhood called Yonder, and this neighborhood is literally perfect. When they arrive to the house, the real estate agent is telling them all the good things. You know, this would make a great forever home, especially if y'all want kids. The neighborhood is cute. The neighborhood is quiet. The house is amazing. Now, the house is real, real cute, but the real estate agent is giving them creepy vibes. So they're like, it's time to go. So they decide to leave but they can't. They drive in circles for hours trying to get out of this neighborhood and it's literally gone from light to dark outside so they decide they'll just do they'll just try again in the morning and they decide to stay in the house just for the night. Next thing you know food starts showing up and it's very clear that they were meant to stay in this house and then a baby shows up on their doorstep like Amazon primed to them and it just continues to get stranger from that point on. At the time of this recording it has 73% on Rotten Tomatoes. Everything from this point on will contain spoilers, so if you haven't seen Vivarium yet and you don't want spoilers, save this video and come back after you do. So right off the bat, the bat, right off the back, right off the bat, this movie starts off kind of weird with that baby bird and the tree scene. I already knew once I saw that and once the bird fell out of the tree or the nest that it was supposed to be a metaphor for life, you know, circle of life, that kind of thing. We even have the teacher telling the little girl that that's just kind of the way things are. And the little girl says, I don't like the way things are. Now, as a member of the black delegation, how many red flags do you need before you say this isn't a good idea? From the moment they walk into the real estate agent, I already knew that we were in for some fuck shit. The agent Martin is giving Sims, not only in the way that he walks and talks, but also in the things that he says, almost like his answers are prepared and kind of in a sequence and very standard. And of course we find out later on that they are, he's learned everything that he knows from humans. So he is repeating them and saying them and kind of spitting them out in a very robotic and Sims like manner. We also get a sneak peek of the neighborhood inside of the real estate office. They have all the houses lined up on either side and you really do get to see that it is a cookie cutter neighborhood. And I think cookie cutter might actually be an understatement. It is the very definition of cookie cutter. It might be the damn cookie. I'm gonna be real. I feel bad for both of the main characters, but I really feel bad for my boy because he was like, I don't think we need to be looking at other houses. And she was like, please sir, just one more. And then they went to go look at one more and of course, the one more that they look at has to be this damn yonder neighborhood. And also, when it came down to the kid, she continued to ignore every red flag. It's like she can't see the color red. I don't know. And I think I just about lost it when they got to the house. And the real estate agent, Martin, kept making it a point to say that this was number nine. Number nine. Bro, they are all number nine. It's all the same house. <laughs> like, what are you talking about? Now, I am an avid HGTV house hunters watcher. So when I was looking at this house, I was like, it's not giving open concept. I thought it was a little stuffy. So I probably would have walked out based on that alone. But if I had continued to look at the house, surely when we got to the point of the house where the real estate agent started mimicking me, I would have been like, maybe something's wrong with bro. Like maybe, like, maybe this isn't the place we needed to be. Do you have children? No, and not yet. No, not yet. That's another red flag that the girl ignored. He literally said verbatim what she said in her voice and she was like, huh, that's normal. Like for some reason, these people thought that that was a reason to continue to tour this house. I need them to be super califragilistic expialidociously for real right now. One thing that I did really love about this movie was this scene right here, this style of kind of overhead creepy slow spinning i feel like i've seen it in the jordan peele movie but i don't think he's the one who originated who originated it i think i, f I feel like i've seen it in other movies uh maybe the movie mirrors or something like that like that creepy slow spinning of the camera from a bird's point of view just screams horror movie to me i wonder if anybody else picked up on this but one of the eeriest things that i found about this movie was actually the sky so the movie is clearly a live action movie but if you really look at the sky the sky is very cartoonish and of course meant to be that way right the clouds are copy and paste you can even see it in the scene when she's talking to the sun she says well where i'm from clouds tend to look like things and the sun goes well these clouds just look like clouds you know they're manufactured clouds and that sky just looks almost anime-ish. It's very cartoony. And to me, that's one of the most eeriest things because uh, it's just this back and forth where whatever these beings are from whatever planet, we don't even know. We never got answers on that, which I'll dig into a little bit later, but we don't really know where they're from. Wherever they are from, the only version of being a human that they have is what they have kind of forced and molded into what they think it is. And it's 
you know, they're sending food that they think humans want to eat. They've built houses that they think humans want to eat. They're giving them a son that they think will act like a human child would act. But the one thing that they couldn't get right was the sky. They didn't understand that clouds aren't uniform. And to me, that's what makes it so eerie. It's like you really get to see the fact that they're not human show in that sky. I love that part. Now, for all intents and purposes, when they do get stuck in this neighborhood and realize that they can't leave, it is kind of like a vacay. Like, they don't have to work, they don't need money, all their food is provided for them. So it's kind of a vibe in that sense. And then evil personified shows up. This little baby who looks like the cutest little baby in the beginning, but we know eventually that he ends up being Martin 2.0. Can I just say I love the fact that they kept this little boy in his Sunday's best throughout the whole film. He looked like he was going to Easter Easter Sunday service the entire film. For me, it really did add to that underlying tone of, no, these beings only exist to be Martins. That is their entire life. They have this one singular purpose in life that is to mimic humans, become a Martin, sell more humans houses. Mimic humans, become a Martin, sell more, you know, like that's, it's again, very robotic, very Sims-like. And it just, again, feeds into that fact that no matter how hard he tries, he's never really a human. Even when he's repeating words back to them, or when he does, ah, oh, so creepy, when he like brushes his forehead to simulate the woman brushing her hair out of her face. And he goes, whatever, but there's no hair there. Oh, it's just so, it's just so creepy. It's just so creepy. It's like perfectly creepy. Clearly geeking out about this movie. I loved it. And even when he's repeating words back to them, it doesn't really match his body. Like his voice never fully matches his body. Another creepy thing. And then that scene when they are dancing outside of the car at night, you finally see the two actual humans getting some sort of, you know, version of life as a human they're dancing they're listening to music and then the sun comes in and starts dancing but then the music stops and he continues to dance in the same kind of like robotic sim like and it's just so creepy it's so creepy that he again he just doesn't get what being a human is it's like he has all of the makings of a human he looks like a human he tries to sound like a human but he doesn't have that one thing that really makes us human that that stream of consciousness that's like Oh, the music stopped, let's stop dancing in this erratic kind of, I don't know, it, that was a creepy scene to me. Another unhuman-like thing that the son did was scream. Mostly when he wanted breakfast or when they weren't doing his breakfast in the way that he wanted. Did anyone peep that that screaming kind of sounded like the screeching that what I assume is the mama bird did at the beginning of the movie when her baby fell out? It was that kind of like, ah! I don't know if that connection was meant to be made, but I made that connection. Also, kind of unrelated, but does this little boy look like baby Norman Bates to you? Like the Norman, the, I shouldn't say Norman Bates. The actor who played Norman Bates in the Netflix version of the show. He looks like a baby little Normie. I don't know. One thing that I do find myself being confused about is how fast or slow the little boy grows. It seems like when they're measuring him, they're like, oh, day 98, he's these tall. And he's like, I'm bigger, I'm bigger, which is also weird. Obviously, he's growing very quickly. The humans aren't aging, but the humans do go through a full life cycle. They die. The man dies first, gets really sick, and then immediately after, the woman dies. Zips her up in that little, you know, body bag and she's headed out. I feel like in Yonder, time is both very fast for the subhumans and for the humans, but the humans don't age whereas the subhumans does age. I don't know how to explain that timeline, but that's just what it is. So at the end of the movie, we find out a few things. One, they are not the first humans to be brought to yonder because he finds another skull of the bottom of the hole that he dug. Two, this isn't the only dimension. We finally get that scene where the subhuman teenage boy slides under the sidewalk, which is again, a really eerie thing to do. And then of course the woman follows immediately and she's falling through all of these different versions of other people living the life that she was living stuck in a version of yonder that is in their their dimension of yonder and another really eerie part of the movie she just keeps falling through these different timelines of all these people who are presumably like her trying to figure out how to get the hell out but they never will right we know that they never will the third thing that we find out is that martin even as a teenage boy is still surviving off of those basic things that he learned as a kid the hair thing <laughs> whatever even at that end scene where he's zipping her up in the body bag and we know that she's on the brink of death and i think she might might have said to him like fuck you or something like that even in that moment he couldn't be a human and said well, well what do you mean fuck me you're like you don't want to talk about it even in that moment he goes 
whatever. It's like, it's so weird. It's so cringe. It's, it's perfect horror, horror movie material in my opinion. The movie is for sure creepy. I don't know how anybody walks away from this movie not feeling creeped out. I think it's very evident that I give this movie a five out of five film reels. I think it did exactly what it was supposed to do. It wrapped up everything perfectly. It wrapped up everything without the need to over explain it. I didn't feel like I needed to know where the beings came from. I didn't need to know about these other dimensions. We know the reality that we were in just like the two main characters know the reality that they were in and that's really all I needed from this movie. I knew that the beings weren't from earth at least not originally and that was good enough for me now if they wanted to do a part two where they did explain more that might be great but i think this is a great standalone movie and i don't think it needs a follow-up or needed any more explanation before we head out i do want to give a shout out to the sponsor of this video Rever, which has brought you this amazing braid out and blown out hair i have been wearing my hair stretched for a little bit over a year now and rev air has completely turned my stretching time around it now only takes me 30 minutes to stretch my hair instead of an hour if you want to try the rev air for yourself i have a code and a link in the description box let me know what you thought about this movie in the comments and i will see y'all in the next one subscribe we follow a young couple and i think cookie cutter find out a few things one Got brand new friends for way back If you my son can't change that